Well, here's the article at Infowars.com by Anthony Gucciardi. It's official. McDonald's and Monsanto are both losing money fast. Close quote. Public awakens to what's really in their food, including the average person who over a lifetime eats a massive amount of, quote, fake food. And again, I don't have an out for McDonald's, except the fact that they've got so many additives and the rest of it, but they're kind of the big dog. If you can make them change, or they won't change and they, and they fall, you can change the world. And so I wanted to get Anthony Gucciardi in here to talk about his article and dovetail it with the article earlier in the week you did for PrisonPlanet.com and StoryLeak.com, where you went over the government's admission of how many tons of fake food, kind of like how many pounds of rat feces can be in our food. I mean, this is in the regulations, but the average person doesn't know about it. And the system's battling to stop GMO labeling and to not let us know what's really in our food. And then meanwhile, we'll show our Twitter page, the new, the new National Geographic coming out says it's a conspiracy theory to say GMO could hurt you when in tons of studies, they admit it's killing rats and causing problems. They've had to recall Starlink corn. I mean, hundreds of different GMO crops. But they're acting like, oh, none of that exists, hoping we're ignorant. Don't they know that doesn't work anymore, Anthony? Well, how many years have we come on air and talked about all the devastating acts of Monsanto and McDonald's and the plastic foam chemicals and McDonald's Happy Meals that everyone's giving to their children, all the synthetic laxatives, all of it, right? How many years have we talked about that and warned over and over again that that's going to collapse as the consumers realize they're not going to eat it anymore? So you can go to somewhere like Whole Foods and get the same stuff that's better and organic for like $5. So the paradigm is collapsing. Here. I went to McDonald's when I was in that Chuck Norris movie they're shooting up in North Texas. Texas a few weeks ago, and I was coming back. I went in one just to use the bathroom uh, in in Waco. There was nothing in there but illegals. I guess they're the only ones that haven't gotten the memo. Sorry. Well, as the economy collapses, people realize they can actually still get organic, healthier options for like $5, and no one wants to go to McDonald's anymore. And it just shows how greedy these corporations are, because, again, we don't have anything against these corporations individually. It's the Mike Norris loading us with, with garbage. But if they would have gone in the 90s or after Super Size Me came out and realized with their market research, which they knew. If they had a change course then, yes. it takes a while to turn a big you know, organization around, but they could have done it and maintained market share. They didn't. They arrogantly doubled down on propaganda, just like Brian Williams did, lying again, and it didn't work. And they're still doing it. They fired their CEO, and they're spending millions of dollars on these trendy campaigns. And he's the one that tried to clean it up and give healthy food compared to... Exactly. He was saying, hey, we actually need to do something different. They want to, instead of changing the ingredients and actually having to spend roughly two more cents in many cases, according to some of the analysis, two cents per actual meal to change the synthetic fillers to actually non-garbage. And it's also important to remember that they did try to do stuff in the past, like they rejected GMO potatoes, and they actually got a little bit of good publicity. But then last week, they accepted them. Let's expand on this. Exactly. Chains like P. Terry's and in out Burger, P. Terry's is much smaller, in out in L.A., that just give you an old-fashioned, big, juicy, dripping burger that doesn't taste like space food or or National Lunch Program uh, prison food, they're all displacing McDonald's. That's even bigger than the health people. McDonald's just feeds people space food crap. People don't want Bill Gates controlled. He's involved. Space food. I mean, we don't want glow-in-the-dark food that doesn't rot. Uh, you know, I mean, Super Size We Showed, it doesn't rot. Something's, you know. It rots you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm ranting. I mean, what does this signify, though? Am I right in saying this is a canary in the coal mine? Yes, and it's a major victory. If you think about it, even CNN now, just think just think five years ago if this were to happen. CNN Money says, is McDonald's doomed, right? And they talk about how their market share is going down. They're underperforming the market. Which yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not us in your article putting out sensational stuff. They're saying this. Yeah, Business Insider, McDonald's is losing America, and it shows their actual profits going down, sliding down, just percentages of decline every single month. For the last 13 months, there's been closures. So these, these companies like McDonald's and like Monsanto, what's happening is we're actually making an effect. And with all economic turnarounds, it takes time, right? So it takes a series of years. Voting with our dollars in the free market. Exactly. Which is why they want to end free markets that only have mega corporations so you don't have choice. That's right. And people are going out and they're voting with their dollar or overall the information is spreading. I mean, just this article right now on InfoWars and everyone caring, it's got, you know, tens of thousands of shares just on Facebook. People are spreading the word. They're mad. And then that's a fact that is turning other individuals onto it. We're going to retweet it right now at Real Alex Jones, this article on McDonald's. I, I would call it the fall of McDonald's. It is. Well, I mean, let's do a follow-up report.
Well, I think we shouldn't include this video in it, in fact. Because the fall of Too Big to Fail. Be we should do a whole, every week for the next month, a review of big corporations that were too big to fall. They got propped up, but they fell because people just stopped visiting them. Well, I don't want to break this right here, but it is Coca-Cola is the next one in line. Their market share is going down. They're losing profits. They're tied to McDonald's and Monsanto. And Bill Gates also owns 500,000 plus shares of Monsanto as of 2011. Who knows what he owns now? So he's invested in all of this. What I want to know is really, is this actually the forefront of the elite system being completely crumbled and turned down over the years? People get it. They have no power but voting with their dollars. Yeah. And by the way, you couldn't find anybody that knew the Federal Reserve was private run for profit and foreign. Now in major polls, most people know that. And they're set to try to audit it soon in the Senate. We're inches away from passing it. We're making progress. That's why they want to start new wars. That's why they want to start a civil war. That's why they've got the talk about the Oscars being racism. This is their tool of control. Anthony Gucciardi is my guest. I want to go to your calls, but Anthony's going to be back home with me tomorrow and a bunch of guests on the weekday show. Covering nature's best remedies. The world of health and healing all around you. National Geographic. People have gone to jail for saying what's in this. But why are they allowed to? Because they know there's a market out there. You have to, and then they sell the products at the back. But separately, there's a new National Geographic coming out saying vaccines are not linked to autism. And that GMO isn't linked to problems. So... The dinosaur media is kind of talking out of both sides of its mouth. We'll break it down tomorrow. Right now, let's go to Elijah in Indiana. You disagree, we're told. Thank you for calling. Yes, hi, Alex. Thanks for taking my call. And uh, I've seen your show a lot regularly over the last year. As I say, you're doing a great job. Well, thank you, brother. So you're one of the reasons why they're going to lose. And my disagreement isn't a big one. It's almost, I'm sort of playing devil's advocate. You said... What's going on in the Middle East right now is 100% all controlled by, you know, the globalists, the guys really pulling the strings. Well, no, starting it and shepherding it and protecting it, but not, but but they were manipulating forces that were already there. It's like causing a cattle stampede or something. You're not the cattle. You don't run them, but you, you know, fired the flare gun into them to make them start running. Right, I would agree. But I think, you know, you know better than one. These globalists, they're control freaks. They need to control every aspect that they oversee. And I feel that they see... You know, the jihadists, they see these uh, radical groups as almost a wild card, not so much a threat, but just a threat. Oh, they I agree. They want to bomb some of them and get them back in line. Absolutely. This is like a cattle prod to keep the cattle you know, going the direction you want. It's like a sheepdog herding the sheep. I'm sorry. You can pin them as the common enemy and rally the troops, get the troops back on the side of the machine of the government to get them to attack them. And then over here back in America... You can push that everyone who disagrees with the left and CNN and whatnot, you can call them xenophobic, Islamophobic, or racist. You can continue the racial and political... Exactly, you can see the dialectic while the globalists are behind it. Excellent point. Anything else? Um, no, not at all, but thank you for letting me uh, talk on your show. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Uh, Anthony Thomas on what he just said. No, I think that's great. That's the kind of discussion we need, not someone calling in and just bashing you, but actually saying, hey, I disagree with this point. And you actually, sounds like you agree perfectly with them. Well, sure. I mean, it's, it's stuff so complex. It's hard to put these ideas out exactly correctly because it's so complex. And that's the thing, too, that if you're willing to actually ex explain the ideas, you're putting yourself out to be attacked because there's so much minutia and minute detail. Exactly. The media has dumbed the debate down to just... Coke, Pepsi, Ford, Chevy, we're here to get people outside the box. Not to think like we do, just to think outside the box. That's why they don't actually argue with your segments. They take snippets of a 30-second discussion that you have and then attack that. Or images. Or out of, they'll just make something up. That's yeah, what, that's it. look at this. We've been saying this forever. Fresh nuclear leak detected at Fukushima. Talk about why people should get X2. Yeah. Protect their thyroids. I mean, that's why I got into thyroid uh, research, all the thyroid problems in this country. And, and that's kind of an example, if I may mention something as well. I mean, f Fukushima, it's not something that's in your face. You don't see green clouds of radiation coming to your house, but every single day it's coming to the West Coast. All the scientists and experts say it's going to happen for... The FDA and EPA had to raise the level of what they said was safe because of it. And they shut the counters off in Fukushima and on the West Coast. I mean, it's still happening every day. The radiation is still hitting us. We're still going to... It's still melting down. Yeah, I mean, we're still going to get sick from it. People are dying of cancer near Fukushima, 6,000% increase in cancer rates, but we don't see that every day, so no one cares. They will care if another explosion happens.
Because oh, if five people get shot at a mall, they'll say suspend the Bill of Rights and Constitution. Oh, exactly. But they don't care about the actual radiation because you can't see it. And that's a whole other issue, too. That if you can't actually see something and you dare to call it out and speak <coughs> about it, then you're crazy. Meanwhile, the top Russian general came out four days ago and said we're at war with the U.S., but that doesn't matter. No, that's fine as well. I mean, it's just bizarro land. George in Ontario, Canada, you're on the air. Thanks for calling. Hi, Alex. Thanks for taking my call. I've got a two-part question I'd like to throw at you just to get your, uh, your comment. I'll on. do my First best. Call, um, I, I've heard you say quite a few times that the U.S. military is, is awake. I'm just wondering what side they're actually on because I'm kind, of, I'm kind of curious. Why are they taking orders from Obama if they can see the writing on the wall for the country and the Constitution? I'm just curious why you think maybe they're is it because the brass at the top are paid, you know, paid off, and they're just going along like sheep, or is there a, is there another reason why? I think you answered your own play? question. They're just like anybody else. They're compartmentalized. They're individuals. They know our government's not run by our government. It's run by foreign interests. They know our government's destabilizing countries, starting wars, siding with radical Islamists to attack Russia in Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, um, Chechnya, and other areas. They now know. And if you ask who, what they believe, they're on the American people's side, they're on the Constitution side, they're on the Bill of Rights side. They're, they are the most group, the, the most awake group out there. The problem is the brass is all under heavy surveillance. There's a huge culling and a purge going on of brass that don't play ball. And that's been in the news. Uh, so I'm just saying the good news is the military was given their orders to prepare for national gun confiscation and civil war about four years ago. And since then, it's come out in the news. And that totally woke them up and backfired. So, Anthony, your take on that. Just remember when every single major nuke commander was fired over a period of several months just last year because they wouldn't play ball on all the secret nuke transfers that were going on, all the top generals being fired, the general that made a YouTube video about it. I mean, there's total insanity. I think there's infighting in every level. In the brass. It appears, as best we know, they are decommissioning our backup arsenals. They are selling us out right now. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, this guy, I mean, folks, the borders are wide open. I mean, the country's gone right now. It's like we've just been stabbed. We're bleeding to death. And I'm like, let's get a tourniquet on here. Let's fix the arteries that are cut. They're like, shut up, conspiracy theorist. I mean, this is epic what's going on. There could be a whole show about every single thing we just talked about. There could be a whole 24 hours of every single thing. Yeah, why'd they fire every new commander? Yeah. Everyone. And it just came out over and over again. And then I remember the Associated Press was like, oh, it was actually secret, but we got a tip about it. And then they had to admit it. And there were standoffs at Dias with the security force that was police aiming guns and, and like, where are these nukes going? Regular and, trucks picking up nuclear weapons. And they're like, there's no documents. And then the yep. base commander comes out. I mean, you know, we're living in Twilight Zone here, folks. Yeah. And I think that really answers the question that there's two sides to it. I think there is a side that obviously is on freedom, and that's the majority of individuals. And then there is a small, shadowy group that wants to crush those individuals and is with Obama, no question. That's how they're operating these, you know, strange strategies. Now, there, there's an internal battle, folks. I appreciate your call. Hope that answers your question, George. And it, does, it, does it answer it? Yeah, I just have one other quick comment. I started seeing lately on social media people saying stuff like it's time to send the Marines to Washington and that sort of thing. Do you ever expect that maybe the uh, the troops would get so uh, so mad at the government that it would maybe Sure, sure. But historically, that usually goes bad. We just need to restore the republic, get back to common sense, balance our budget, not destabilize the country. The foreign banks want to wreck the country. Our country is so wealthy, so powerful, still has goodwill. If we say we're sorry that we've pulled up and start going the right direction, the world will have a huge sigh of relief. We have a bunch of foreign banks using us as their bully to dominate the world, making corrupt countries like Russia and China look like good guys. They're not good guys either. It's that we're run by just absolute crazy scum that has a score to settle with everybody. The elite want to break this country. They hate the American people. They hate the Russians because they're sovereign. They uh, think they hate Syria because they're sovereign. Think how much they hate us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, George. Uh, my off in New York. Got to move quick. Go ahead. Yes, Alice, it's, it's actually my at. It's um, M-A-A-T. It's okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Yes. Uh, on... Um, 
ISIL and ISIS. There are obvious aspects that uh, this was created by the Mossad and CIA and those type forces. They don't attack any Israeli targets. They weren't hit when they left Syria into Jordan. They have new equipment with keys and manuals attached and Toyota trucks that aren't imported. That are from the U.O. Ma'am, you're at, listen, Wesley Clark just came out and said that our allies, quote, funded them. Well, it's on record. We funded them, too. Everybody's involved. You're absolutely right. Can you hold me over into overdrive? Well, ma'am, we um, can't do overdrive on Sunday. I, I Paul, Call oh. me back tomorrow. In fact, I'm out of time. Anthony, final word. We're taking down Monsanto. We're taking down McDonald's. We can ultimately change the system. It sounds like every caller and everyone wants that. They want to change the system. Sure, sure. And we say America, NATO, Israel, Turkey are behind ISIS. No, they're not. Criminal elements are allowing these groups to do this. Most people in Israel and Turkey don't like funding ISIS. Okay, so, so that's the issue. God bless you all. Great job, crew. Back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, Lord willing, with the weekday broadcast.